Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MedSynapse podcast series. I'm your host, Dr. Nigar, and today we have a distinguished guest joining us, Dr. Yasser Bhatt. Dr. Yasser is a certified consultant pediatric cardiologist from the Saudi Council for Health Practitioners, showing a broad skill set including transthoracic and transesophageal echocardiography, fetal echocardiography, and interventional procedures for congenital heart disease. With expertise in decision-making for cardiology patients in various clinical settings, Dr. Yasser has made significant contributions to pediatric ECG and Holter interpretation along with impressive track record of over 10 international publications in research mythology. In today's episode, we're privileged to have Dr. Yasser share insights on the topic, the complexities of diagnosing and assessing heart murmurs in pediatric patients, addressing concerns and managing cases related to these murmurs, making informed decisions about diagnostic tests and effectively communicating with patients about this critical aspect of pediatric cardiology. Welcome, Dr. Yasser. Thank you, Dr. Nigar, for, for giving me this opportunity uh, once again. Uh, it's an honor. Thank you so much for being us today on this very important topic. Now, let's dive right in. Dr. Yasser, could you elaborate on the nuances of diagnosing and assessing heart murmurs in a clinical setting? And what key details should fellow doctors be aware of during examination? So, um, uh, cardiac murmurs are uh, so one of the commonest uh, reason um, of referral uh, of pediatric patients to uh, the cardiology department. Almost seventy uh, percent of the referrals uh, from uh, uh, the pediatric department for cardiology evaluation is uh, because of the murmur. And uh, however. Only 1% of uh, the referred cases have a significant uh, congenital heart disease. So, uh, moreover, uh, the cardiac murmur uh, in a child is associated with a high level of parental anxiety and um, utilization of um, health care resources. Also, uh, it uh, leads to a dilemma among the physicians uh, what to do with the murmur, uh, I mean, w- whether to refer the child to the cardiology or uh, send the patient home uh, because most of the murmurs are innocent murmurs and um, uh, there's no underlying uh, cardiac reason for the heart murmur. The one thing uh, a physician must uh, do is um, to distinguish between an innocent murmur and a pathological murmur. An innocent murmur is the one which is uh, short, it's uh, not loud, more than grade 2, grade 3, it's, it's, it's sweet, it's not harsh, and um, it does not uh, radiate to the other parts of the chest. While as a pathological murmur uh, is loud, it's grade 3 and more, it's long, it's harsh in quality. Uh, it 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 does radiate to the uh, other parts of the chest frequently, and uh, it does not change with the change in the body body position. So while as the innocent murmur uh, changes if uh, while the patient goes from sleeping to standing and uh, uh, sitting to the lying down position. So this is the most important thing. Uh, a physician uh, should be able to. Uh, or classify the murmur, whether it's an innocent murmur or a pathological murmur. This definitely reinforces the importance of comprehensive approach to diagnosis. As fellow doctors, let's remember the significance of a thorough examination. Now, moving on to our next question. Dr. Yasser, when dealing with patients presenting symptoms associated with heart murmurs, what advice you offer to fellow doctors on addressing the concerns and managing these cases? Yeah, my uh, advice to the fellow um, uh, physicians would be to assess the patient beyond the murmur. So, uh, 
have a full look at the patient, a look at the history, signs and symptoms, and uh, classify the murmur. In regard to the history of the patient, the family history of the patient is very important. Uh, if there is a family history of uh, congenital heart disease, uh, uh, in the first uh, degree relative, uh, like in parents of the children or siblings of the ch uh, child, so um, the risk of having the um, congenital heart disease in the uh, particular patient uh, would be around uh, uh, 3 to 20 percent, which is quite a significant risk. And um, suppose the patient uh, has a, a baby has a, a mother who had an uh, autoimmune disease and uh, like SLE. So the baby is at high risk of having uh, um, a cardiac condition uh, called as complete heart block. Um, which needs uh, uh, urgent attention after the birth. So, moreover, if the mother is consuming uh, some medication like uh, uh, retinoids, uh, uh, vitamin A uh, mm. uh, supplements, uh, we recently had a case uh, where the mother had taken vitamin A um, uh, during the first trimester and uh, we saw the baby during the fetal life and uh, the baby had a, a large ventricular septal defect and after the birth, the baby had um, all the features of the retinoid embryopathy. So the history is very important uh, in regard to the murmur. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, besides the family history and the maternal history, the if the uh, child is uh, uh, if dysmorphic is a child is syndromic, so there's a higher likelihood of having uh, congenital heart disease. So uh, even though the uh, patient has an innocent murmur, so uh, these patients should be referred and evaluated by the pediatric cardiologist. Other congenital uh, defects, suppose the patient child has a renal defect or he has uh, uh, involvement of the other organ systems. So it is better to refer the patient for cardiology evaluation to rule out any significant congenital heart disease. Uh, moreover, the mem, uh, yeah, uh, and and uh, uh, furthermore, uh, the history of fever in a child with murmur, uh, prolonged fever. So, in these cases, we have to look for the diagnosis of the Kawasaki disease, endocarditis or rheumatic fever so depending on the clinical presentation so uh, these patients uh, we should take seriously so overall uh, uh, this, these are the important things in the history so uh, in the examination the signs and symptoms uh, uh, the physician should uh, take a full assessment of the growth of the child so if there is a growth uh, faltering and the child is not growing well, especially the infants uh, uh, is not thriving well. So this should be taken um, seriously and the patient might have a significant heart disease. Um, the other thing to consider in examination would be the, um, the examination of the vital signs, the tachycardia, Tachypnea, the heart rate is higher, it can be a sign of a congenital heart disease or the heart respiratory rate is higher in absence of the respiratory tract infection or the patient has a respiratory uh, distress in absence of the respiratory tract infection or patient uh, patient has the uh, low oxygen sat saturation um, uh, in absence of the respiratory signs and symptoms. So these are all indicators, uh, pointers uh, towards uh, that the child is having some uh, sort of uh, congenital heart disease. So um, all, all uh, a detailed uh, birth history, um, past medical history, personal history, and uh, the, um, uh, the head to toe examination uh, is important components uh, to determine 
the uh, you know the diagnosis of the patient now when it comes to diagnostic tests how do you approach the decision making process for ordering diagnostic tests related to heart murmurs um there's a paper uh, statement released by uh, american college of cardiology american heart association and american association of pediatrics uh, where uh, they have uh, uh classified the uh, murmurs as innocent and pathological and uh, they um uh um they um uh, say when uh, look at when uh, would be the uh, appropriate uh, to send a patient with murmur for uh, an echocardiogram so so there are guidelines for that so if the child has a, a, a pathological murmur so he is an appropriate candidate to be uh, have an uh, echocardiogram uh, if the patient has an innocent murmur without any signs or history uh, significant uh, history or any signs and symptoms of congenital heart disease so it is rarely appropriate to have an echocardiogram uh on the other hand if uh, you have a patient with an innocent murmur but with an abnormal uh, physical exam and uh, uh, the significant uh, history so again the uh, the patient is a uh candidate uh, is appropriate uh, the candidate for uh, um, the appropriate to have an uh, echocardiogram in such patients so however what i said is applicable to the children more than 1 year of age uh, this would not apply to uh, the children uh, to the infants and the neonates especially so because uh, in the neonatal life um, there are hardly any symptoms and signs of uh, heart disease so we will not see any signs and symptoms of heart failure we will not be able to see in the weak pulses uh, in first 48 hours of life when the doctors would be patient so even a um, innocent murmur in a neonatal life or a small infant uh, may uh, indicate uh, that the baby is having a severe uh, congenital heart disease so a benign murmur and innocent murmur in a neonate or an infant should be taken seriously and uh, uh, should be evaluated with an echocardiogram so um uh, there has been studies that show that the the yield of um, the you know, congenital heart disease uh, in the neonates and infants with an innocent murmur could be as high as 30% so these are the patients where we should be evaluating them uh, carefully coming to our final question for the day let's speak about communication when communicating with patients about heart murmurs what strategies have you found effective in ensuring empathy and understanding yeah uh, this um, telling the parents uh, that their child has a murmur i mean uh, causes a lot of parental anxiety it should be clarified to the parents in the beginning that the murmur is innocent okay which is usually in the most circumstances that uh, the the child is less likely to have any cardiac problem and um, yeah, the murmur is uh, a normal and uh, we can see it in a normal population it's because of the normal flow in the uh, heart and uh, this murmur may persist for uh, some time or it may be there but it will not uh, cause any problems so this should be clarified uh, in the beginning uh, to the parents to relieve their anxiety uh, if the murmur is innocent so uh, more about the if the uh, murmur is pathological they should be properly referred uh, to the pediatric cardiologist and uh, for the uh, evaluation with an echocardiogram so uh, there were some studies uh, by gofrey at 
all and Barson et al who looked at the parental anxiety after a diagnosis of child uh, with heart murmur. So um, both studies showed that uh, uh, there were a high level of parental anxiety after they received this news that their child has a murmur. So how were the anxiety was <clears throat> relieved after the, the family uh, were referred to the pediatric cardiologist? Despite the guidelines I uh, stated earlier, I mean, uh, there is an extensive use of uh, cardiac evaluation uh, in the patients with the innocent murmur because of this uh, issue, because of the high parental anxiety. As we conclude our conversation today, Dr. Yasser, we want to express our deepest appreciation for your generosity in sharing your knowledge on heart murmurs. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Yasser. We're looking forward to many more sessions together. And to our audience, we extend our heartfelt thanks for tuning in. We hope that Dr. Yasser's expertise has been as enlightening for you as it has been for us. To our audience, until our next episode, stay curious and stay connected. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the next Manat's podcast to spread the wealth of knowledge. Take care and we look forward to having you with us again. Goodbye.